Okay, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, my name is Bill Neville, Business Development Manager with the Entrust Group, and we are going to talk about six self-directed IRA rules that investors need to know. So um, we're going to do a presentation that probably will take about 15, 20 minutes, and at the end we'll uh, do a Q&A. So um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and type them in, and I'm going to answer them at the end. And, just bear in mind those Q&As often can take fairly long, so um, we might be here a while for, with depending upon how many questions we get. Um, the Entrust Group, I legally am required to put this up. We do not provide investment advice or endorse any particular investments. Anything that we talk about here is for educational purposes only. Anybody who's looking to do an investment within their self-directed IRA are uh, encouraged to consult with your attorneys, accountants, financial advisors, et cetera, before entering into any type of investment. All right, now we got that out of the way. A uh, little bit, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Entrust. <coughs> Excuse me. What specifically is a self-directed retirement account? Um, what are your investment options and advantages? What are some of the six rules that we mentioned we're going to ask, answer, and then what's the process for investing, and then finally the Q&A, which will probably make up the line share of this webinar. Uh, quickly about Entrust, we've been in business for about 35 years, actually 36 years coming up. Um, process a lot of transactions every month, and we hold, actually I think that number's a little low, I think we're over $3 billion at this point in investor assets. The majority of our staff are certified IRA service professionals. We are the only company in our space that uh, has a national continuing education program. So that's a program that we offer to, uh, to realtors and to, um, to CPAs that provide two CE credits um, that's called real estate IRAs. Um, we have an IRA academy. We actually uh, have an individual in our company who trains other people in our space, other companies in our space, that uh, gives them the training and education they need to pass the Certified IRA Service Professional uh, class. So again, um, we are the leading educator in our industry. It's, we focus very much on educating, and that's what this webinar is about. Um, and we do uh, uh, webinars like this. We also do local uh, stuff. So if anybody's interested in having us uh, come and do a presentation for a group of investors or a group of CPAs or a group of realtors or whatever you want, uh, we're opening. We're open to do that, and we certainly, I certainly do plenty of that here in the Bay Area in particular. Uh, so, what is a self-directed IRA? So, simply, a self-directed IRA is a marketing term that means that you are going to take your retirement account and you make all your investment decisions. So, you decide what you're going to invest in, and you can invest in alternative assets. And an alternative asset is anything that falls outside the excuse me, the traditional stock bond mutual funds and CDs that you can invest in with any brokerage firm. So if you sometimes see uh, some of the big brokerage firms might advertise that you can do a self-directed IRA with them. Um, what they're saying is, is that they'll allow you to pick your own stocks. You're allowed to do your own stock trading within your retirement account. But they still don't allow you to invest in things like real estate, precious metals, private placements, promissory notes, et cetera, et cetera. So from our standpoint, it's not a true self-directed IRA because they are limiting the investments that you can make to stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Uh, whereas in a true self-directed IRA with a company like Entrust, we are, uh, we, we are open to holding other alternative assets like, again, real estate. Real estate, precious metals, and private equity, private placements are, are the most popular investments that people hold with us. Um, in order for your account to qualify as a retirement account, it has to be held by a third-party custodian or trustee, and that's the role that Entrust plays. We are the third party that provides all the, um, all the administrative and custodial services that ha allows it to qualify as a retirement account. But again, with us, you can invest in other assets besides just being limited to stocks, bonds, mutual funds. So a self there is no type of IRA called a self-directed IRA. The types of retirement accounts are called traditional. There's a traditional IRA, a Roth IRA, a SEP, uh, simple 401k plans. We have health savings account and educational savings accounts that all of those can be self-directed. You can open any type of account that you want that can be self-directed into the investment that you want to make. As far as investment options, I mean, pretty much anything that you want to invest in, it's a lot 
easier, it's a lot shorter list to tell you what you can't invest in than what you can. But these are examples of, of the most popular types of investments that people with N-Trust, or, or not just an N-Trust, probably the whole entire self-directed IRA industry that they invest in. Uh, single family or multi-unit homes, commercial property, people can buy land, precious metals is popular, LLCs and limited partnerships. Uh, offshore real estate is becoming popular, apartment buildings. Uh, so really any kind of real estate notes, you could do promissory notes where your IRA is the lender. Um, Bitcoin is becoming a more and more popular thing for people to uh, um, invest in. Holding cryptocurrency uh, for investment purposes within your IRA is becoming more and more popular. What are the advantages? Well, the big advantages, obviously, is you get to invest in other assets besides just the limited traditional stock bonds, mutual funds, and CDs. If you have a particular knowledge about real estate, if you have a particular uh, knowledge about uh, um, maybe you have somebody who has a company um, that they're starting up and they're looking for investors and you think it's going to be a successful company, you can invest in that company using your retirement account. Uh, again, you could use your IRA to be the bank if you know somebody who's looking to borrow money and uh, maybe it's a short-term loan for, uh, for maintenance or something and they don't want to go to the bank. Um, your IRA could loan that individual money as long as it's not a disqualified person. Um, so it gives you a lot, of, a lot of different opportunities that you don't have with the traditional brokerage firms. Opportunity to invest in what you truly know and understand and, and really truly diversify your portfolio as opposed to having four different types of mutual funds that you're being told is, is a well-diversified portfolio, but it's still all mutual funds kind of all within the stock market. Um, you do get the opportunity if you want. You can partner your IRA with other individuals on an investment, including you can partner with yourself. Um, there is no capital gains. If you buy a property with your IRA and you sell it with your IRA, all that, that entire transaction occurs within the retirement account. So there is no uh, capital gains tax because uh, you personally are not the one who bought and sold that. Your retirement account bought and sold that. And ultimately, the whole purpose of doing this, the whole purpose of having a retirement account is you want to grow your retirement account. You want to invest uh, as much as you can to be able to, uh, to grow your account. And so you want to invest in something you think is going to grow your account. So if there's a real estate investment or a promissory note or a private company or a startup or something that you think is, has the opportunity to, to increase the value of your account more than mutual funds, more than the stock market will, then that's the reason for having a self-directed IRA. If you're happy with investing in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and certainly there are a lot of people who have done very well investing in that, then you don't need a self-directed IRA. You can have your account with any brokerage firm or, or an E-Trade or a Scott Trade, and you can hold mutual funds, have your IRA, and invest in the traditional stocks and bonds. The one main thing you need to know about, there are some rules around what prohibited uh, transactions and disqualified persons. There are certain investments that are, are prohibited from being invested in an IRA, and those are them right there, collectibles, life insurance, and S-corporations. Uh, note about so collectibles, example is art, uh, coin collections, stamps, alcoholic beverages. Note the asterisk next to metal and coin because there is a difference between collectibles, coin collections, and investment grade precious metals. So you can invest in investment quality precious metals like gold, silver, platinum through a precious metals dealer. So um, the, the determination on whether something is, is an investment versus a collectible, it's based on the fineness of that, of that metal. And so basically if it's a dealer that's selling coins for coin collection, maybe an old coin uh, that may increase in value because of the age, that's not considered investment, that's collectible. But if it's gold that has the, the right level of fineness and it's sold by a, a, a precious metal dealer, you can hold that in your IRA. Uh, then you cannot invest in life insurance and you can't invest in an S-corporation because of how the tax laws work for S-corporations. There are also prohibited transactions. It means that your IRA is not allowed to do business with a disqualified person and you're not allowed to engage in self-dealing. So we have some examples of what would be considered a, a prohibited transaction, buying or selling a property to or from a disqualified person. I'm going to go over who is a disqualified person in a second. Um, hiring a disqualified person to do work on the property. For example, you as the account holder are a disqualified person. You can't do your own work on your property. Um, if you're 
children or parents or somebody like that is a contractor, they're not allowed to do work on the, because they're a disqualified person. And also a disqualified person is not allowed to live in an Iran owned property. So who are disqualified persons? Um, <laughs> Our individuals or entities are prohibited from engaging with an IRA, and many prohibited transactions stem from the involvement of a disqualified person. Let's see if we have the list. Here they are. So who are disqualified persons? You and your spouse are considered disqualified persons. Your ancestors, so parents, grandparents, etc. Your lineal descendants, children, grandchildren, etc., and their spouses and then any fiduciaries and plan service providers. So a CPA, for example, if you have a CPA, they would be considered a disqualified person as well, as is a beneficiary. So if you name somebody who would not typically be a disqualified person, such as a sibling or a friend as a disqualified person, as a beneficiary of your retirement account, then they become a disqualified person as well. Okay. So I'm going to leave that up for a bit because it's important. You and your spouse, your ancestors, your lineal descendants, fiduciaries such as CPAs and lawyers, and then, of course, beneficiaries, which we don't list on there. Everyone else, so siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, strangers, are not disqualified persons. Those are qualified. Your IRA can sell property to them, buy, buy property from them. Can uh, a, disqual a non disqualified person can stay in a property, can work on a property. Uh, if you have a, want your IRA to invest in a private company, it can invest in a private company that's being owned by a non-disqualified person. It cannot invest in a company that's owned by a disqualified person. So um, that's a, the basics of the rules. If you have a, a scenario that you want to uh, understand a little bit better of whether it would be considered prohibited or not, you're welcome to contact me. Um, I'm going to give you my contact information at the end of this presentation. Uh, self-dealing is something that you're not allowed to do. This is rule number three. What is the self-dealing rule? Re because retirement accounts are tax-deferred, the IRS prohibits any investments that deliver immediate gain. So what that means is that any investment that your IRA makes must be purely for the benefit of the IRA. It can't be for your own personal benefit. So we gave some examples. What's an example of self-dealing? You staying in a, re in a property that's owned by your IRA. So if you buy a property using your retirement account, you can't use it as a second home, you can't use it as a vacation home, uh, it can't be anything that, any a property that you ever stay in or any other disqualified person. Um, you are not allowed to personally borrow money from your IRA. Your IRA can loan money to non-disqualified third parties, but it can't, you can't borrow money from your IRA. You can borrow money from a 401k plan. Uh, 401k plans do allow you to borrow up to $50,000 50% of the value of your 401k up to $50,000. So this is specifically talking about an IRA, but you can borrow from a 401k, but there are specific rules. 50k has to be paid back in five years at a, a reasonable interest rate. Um, taking personal payment directly from an income produ so producing property. So if you have a re if you have a, a, a property held in your retirement account, that rent, if it's rented out, has to get paid back to your IRA. If you want that money as a, a, to take for personal use, it has to go back to the IRA and then distributed to you from the IRA. If you take it directly from the tenant, if the tenant pays you the rent directly and the property is owned by your IRA, that's a prohibited transaction and puts your entire IRA at risk of being disqualified. So if you commit a prohibited transaction within your retirement account, you are putting the entire account at risk. So the money has to go back to the retirement account and then distributed to you after that. Uh, and then any use of property owned by your IRA that brings personal benefit to you rather than the account. Um, it's just it's a general thing. There's no personal, there, there's no self-benefiting rule that you're allowed to do. Um, this is specifically related to property, but a, an example of it could, would potentially be investing in a company that you have personal ownership. Now, it depends upon the personal ownership that you have in that company. Um, and what your role is in that company, that it may not be considered disqualified, but it also may be considered a, a prohibited transaction. So uh, those are examples of, of what's considered self-dealing and something that's specifically mentioned in the Internal Revenue Code that says no self-dealing. What are the contribution limits for a retirement account? So this is for a traditional and Roth. Anybody with earned income that earns at least that amount of money, $5,500, 
with if you're 50 and older can do an additional $1,000. So anybody with earned income can contribute to a traditional and Roth IRA for a $6,500 contribution if you're 50 or older, 5500 if you're not. So there are other ways to fund your IRA besides con contributing, and this is typically how most people when they open a retirement account with NTRUST, they fund it. They either transfer from an existing IRA, they roll over from a 401k, and there's a difference between a rollover and a direct rollover. If you receive a distribution from your retirement account, be it a 401k or an IRA, you have 60 days to roll that over into a new account before it becomes taxable to you. So that's a rollover is when the money gets sent to you and then you roll it over to your other account, your new account, within 60 days. A direct rollover means that it's simply rolled directly from the 401k over to your IRA. So if you wanted to open an account with NTRUST and you have a 401k plan, you can instruct the custodian of your 401k plan to roll that money directly over to your NTRUST IRA, and that's what's considered a direct rollover. But those are other ways. Those are actually the most common ways that people fund their retirement accounts with us is through a transfer rollover or direct rollover. Bear in mind that prior to age 59 and a half, if you want to take a distribution from your retirement account, and you're allowed, you can take a distribution from your retirement account anytime you want, but prior to 59 and a half, there is a 10% early withdrawal penalty, unless you have a few exceptions. You can take an early withdrawal without the penalty if you have certain disability edu for education, certain medical insurance, uh, first home purchase, I think is up to $10,000 for military. So there are certain medical expenses, and obviously um, death that can go to your beneficiary. Uh, so there are instances where you can take a distribution from a retirement account early and not pay the 10% penalty. But bear in mind, you will always pay the tax. This does not mean that it's a tax-free distribution. It just means that you don't have to pay the penalty on top of the tax. Um, and this is for traditional IRAs, Roth or uh, SEPs, 401Ks. Roth IRA rules are a little bit different. Um, Roth is a tax-free distribution, but you have to have the Roth account for at least five years, and you have to be 59 and a half. Uh, and then any earnings, any distributions is completely tax-free. And then lastly, required minimum distribution. So I mentioned prior to 59 and a half, uh, if you take a distribution, and again, you're allowed to take a distribution, you're just going to pay a 10% penalty on top of the tax. From 59 and a half to 70 and a half, you can take a distribution at, and without re, uh, paying the 10% penalty. At 70 and a half, you're required to start taking distributions. So once you each reach the age 70 and a half, the IRS has rules in place that say that you are required to take minimum distributions. This is for tradi traditional SEP simples and 401ks. Roth IRAs are not subject to required minimum distributions. Um, you are always allowed to take more than you want from than the required minimum distribution, but you have to take at least the required minimum distribution. If you do not take the distribution or if you don't meet the required minimum, you have to pay 50% amount on the undistributed RMD. So what that means is if your required minimum distribution is, let's say, $50,000 and you only take $40,000 as a distribution, then you're going to pay on that $10,000 that you did not take as a distribution, you're going to pay a $5,000 tax on that, 50% of the amount that you did not take. Uh, and then as mentioned earlier, the Roth IRAs are not subject to required minimum distributions. So there's how required minimum distributions is determined. It's, uh, it's based on, um, on uh, actuarial tables of, expected, of life expectancy. There are, um, there are sites, there are websites that you can go in and, and, and put in the dollar amount your age and it will tell you what your required minimum distribution is. Um, or you can just contact the custodian of your plan and ask them what your required minimum distribution is. Your required minimum distribution is going to be based on the account value as of the end of the previous year. So 2017 required minimum distributions is based on the fair market value of all of your accounts in 2016. If you have accounts with multiple different custodians, then you, um, the, all of those different accounts will, will get added together to calculate re your required minimum distribution, but you don't have to take the distribution from the different accounts. You can take your full distribution from one of the accounts. You can take distributions from different accounts. 
It doesn't have to match up. So if your required minimum distribution with Entrust is $20,000 and your required minimum distribution with some other custodian is $40,000, you can take all $60,000 from the other custodian. You can take you know, 20 from them and 40 from Entrust, but you still have to take the required minimum of 60 uh, in total. I hope that made sense. Um, Here's an example, here's a case study of an uh, individual turned 72 in 2017. So as I mentioned, her account balance as the end of 2016 uh, determines what her requirement distribution is going to be according to her, um, her life expectancy. Her distribution period is at 25.6. So uh, you take the $100,000 divided by 25.6 and that determines what her requirement of distribution is for the year. Again, there are, um, there are sites that you can just go in and that calculates it for you where you enter in your, <coughs> excuse me, where you enter in this information and it'll come up with a dollar amount. As far as uh, what the process is, if you want to do a self-directed IRA and invest in real estate or precious metals or private equity or anything else, is just open an interest account, fund your account via a transfer rollover or an annual contribution, and then purchase your asset. Opening an account, we have an online portal that you can uh, go to our website, theuntrustgroup.com, and click on open an account and follow the instructions and open your account online, or just fill out our forms. Um, uh, account application, fee disclosure form, and a copy of your ID, and we'll open the account for you. And then fund your account, transfer. You would complete an Entrust transfer form. We would send it to the other custodian requesting the transfer. Uh, if it's a rollover, you would need to contact the custodian of your 401k plan to initiate the rollover. Um, if it's just a contribution, then send us a check and fill out our deposit coupon. And then purchasing your asset involves instructing us to purchase your asset because it's the account that's buying the asset, which means we have to review and sign all the documents. So we have a form called a bi-direction letter that you would complete along with the supporting documents for the investment that you're making. So if it's a, con if it's a property, you would send us the purchase contract, and eventually we would need all the to review and sign all the closing documents. And the name of the investor, uh, would be the Entrust Group, FBO, your name and account number. That's the entity that's buying whatever investment you're making. If it's a private placement, we would review the subscription agreement. If it's an LLC or LP, for example, we would need to review the subscription agreement and sign the subscription agreement, make sure that it's properly vested in the name of your IRA. Uh, 